Don't pick your skin, big bandage. I'm going to be talking about something that has been very personal to me and because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This video disclaimer is not based on medical discoveries or research. This video is simply based on my opinion and my experience. So your experience could be completely different than my experience, but I just wanted to share with you guys my experience on breast cancer. In the beginning, before my mom had breast cancer, cancer was something that was never really like something I connected to. Uh, when people wanted to raise money for cancer or when people had a relative or friend that had cancer, it kind of went through one ear and out the other because cancer was so foreign to me. It was just something like I thought other people would have and it would never really affect me because my family doesn't have a history of really cancer. It's not something that like affects my family that much. So it was really, really surprising when we found out my mom had breast cancer because um, it wasn't genetic. Nobody else in my family had it. And I will tell you most of breast cancer patients have no genetic history of breast cancer. And one out of eight women will have breast cancer sometime in their life. And so I hope if you don't get anything from this video at all, I hope you will be able to take away some kind of urgency and some kind of responsibility to tell your loved ones, um, especially women over 40, to definitely get their mammograms and just to make sure to get their annual checkups. So my mom got her screening and she actually missed her screening from the previous year. Who would have known what would have happened if she actually took her screening when she was supposed to? Um, but she was going on a long trip and she just wanted to get her, you know, doctor's appointment, just get it done, get it over with. And from there she got a mammogram and then they called her back to get a biopsy. So when you get a mammogram, they look at the tissues in your breast and they want to see if there's any like abnormal developments. And they called her in for a biopsy and the biopsy is apparently very painful, but they take this like long needle and they take some um, tissue from that area to see if it's cancerous. So she did the biopsy, whatever. And then a few a couple weeks later, my mom texts me and she says, the doctor called, there's bad news. And I specifically remember I was in New York City and I was walking around and just finished lunch and I was gonna go uh, do some yoga or something. And I immediately just, uncontrollably started bawling because seeing you know the doctor say I have bad news there's only one outcome right again cancer was something very foreign to me it was something I felt like couldn't happen to any one of us um, and so I was in New York for this time I was there for a week and um, my dad and my mom went to the doctor's appointment and they said you have breast cancer and it was just this whirlwind of emotions because when you think of someone having cancer you think of them um, without any hair and you think of them like almost dying away from you and you kind of think that cancer is almost a death sentence um, and it was a very emotional week for me I think I like just was so emotional for two or three days because it was so foreign that I didn't really know what it was. Then my mom had to get the tumor out of her breast. So in her left breast, there was a tumor. They had to get it out, but they didn't know if the tumor had spread to her lymph nodes or to other organs in her body. So what cancer is, which I didn't really understand, is basically cancer is when your cells are not replicating in the right way and they have inaccurate information or the cells are replicating with not like the DNA they're supposed to have. And you can just think of it as almost like a battle or an army, right, taking over an area. And um, the reason why people die of cancer is because that army um, those cancer cells will spread to the organs in your body and therefore your organs can't perform the jobs that they're supposed to do and that's how people die. And the thing about cancer is everybody has like cancer cells in their body. Um, so everyone has like some sort of like mutated cells, right? That's fine. A lot of times those cells are not going to replicate and spread. So the important thing is, is 
if we can catch the cancer early, we can stop it from spreading um, and affecting the organs. The reason why people die is because the cancer has already spread to aggressive parts of the body or uh, has affected the organs or is just super aggressive that they're killing off all the healthy cells. So they just wanted to see if um, her cancer cells were going into her lymph nodes, um, which is right here, like along your armpits. And if they were to go into her lymph nodes, uh, she would be at stage two cancer, and which means she would need chemotherapy and radiation. And then from there, we would have to figure out if she was stage three or stage four by doing a lot of scans in the body. Can't remember stage three. I think stage three is where it affects some of the organs, and I think stage four is um, where it has metastasized to other parts of the body. Um, but this has been a while, I can't remember exactly. We got the surgery and then we got the results back and I just, I can remember that day I was out of town again and I had to like take an emergency flight, come back and um, the oncologists, which bless their hearts, like I just feel like oncologists, they're basically the doctors for um, cancer patients. I feel like they have the absolute hardest job in the world because just imagine breaking like sad news to family members and um, friends like every single day like I feel like they would just get numb to it right but the oncologist told us that there were tumor cells in her lymph nodes which means cancer had spread so she had stage 2 cancer which means she would need to um, go through chemotherapy and go through radiation and the the thought of chemotherapy I think affected me the most emotionally because it was just like seeing my mom, and uh, my mom is pretty young. My mom is like 24 years older than me, so she's pretty young. So seeing her, you know, thinking of her not having hair and thinking of her being so weak and um, frail just kind of took me back to this, you know, just kind of, I don't know, it, just, it was just so not what I was used to. You know, we think of our moms, we think of our parents as, almost are heroes and you grow up um, looking up to them and to kind of envision her just being so weak and powerless I think was the hardest part to um, to to absorb so that was um, a really hard time um, knowing that she would have to go through chemotherapy but then the oncologist suggested us to a different doctor who specialized in chemotherapy and stuff. And basically what chemotherapy does is because the cancer had spread to her um, lymph nodes, it probably will spread in other places. Um, and you can't really like just take that lymph nodes chunk out. So chemotherapy will basically kill all the cells in the body, including healthy cells, um, to prevent the cancer from spreading. The crazy part about chemotherapy is um, it is so toxic for you. Like even when they do the chemotherapy, um, they have like hazardous uh, signs on there. They say it's poisonous. They have the skull picture on there and you don't realize how toxic chemotherapy is. And even when you dispose of like the, the bag that the um, liquid is in, you have to like properly dispose of it in hazardous waste. So you just imagine putting yourself through an IV and taking in all those drugs, but then the people who are handling it have to wear like spacesuits and like gloves um, because it's just so toxic. It just it just it was just crazy to think like that is what would help um, the cancer from stopping to spread. That's what chemotherapy does, and you do like I think three rounds of chemo. Or my mom did three rounds of chemo, so basically that means going into, um, I forget what it's called, but it's like the center where they have chemotherapy patients. You sit on a chair, you get um, an IV in you, and then you just let the chemo like toxin drugs go through your body. During that week, you feel like absolute shit. You take a bunch of drugs to make sure you're not nauseous, you don't feel like um, shit, that you can eat, that you can poop, that you can do sort of normal bodily functions and then two or three weeks later you go in and do the chemotherapy over again. So it's like rounds of treatments that you do chemo. And the type of chemo you have really depends on you know your cancer. Um, how frequent the treatment is really depends on the cancer. So different doctors will give different types of treatments. My mom, I think she had Taxol 
um, and I think she had three rounds of it. So that is the most aggressive form of chemotherapy. But that was a very interesting experience and I remember being the good daughter <laughs> that I was. I like cleaned the entire house and I like sanitized the entire house and I bought all these cleaning products because um, when you go through chemotherapy, basically all your healthy cells are dead. So you just want to make sure you're not going to get any kind of sickness or illness because your body can't fight it off. And um, they tell you that you shouldn't eat raw fruits or vegetables or like meat or whatever um, because if you have food poisoning, it's going to like literally kill you. So they said to like not eat out at restaurants, to always cook the food, to make sure you're washing it thoroughly, um, and just to make sure you're not near any like people who are sick. That was the chemotherapy part of it. Um, I just remember, you know, my mom would sit in a chair, um, put in the IV, and um, honestly those rooms where they give the chemotherapy um, treatment to the patients was probably the saddest place I have ever been in my life because you see people in all stages of the cancer. You see them, you know, people like my mom who's very new to it, and then you see people who are literally like stage four, like on their last leg. You have see, you can see that they're so frail, they're literally stick and bones. And it was a very, um, hard experience to go through um, because again I was I've never been in this I, I all my life it's about business and beauty products and happy things but to see people like going to treatment and suffering so much just to live another day month year in their life really gave me perspective on what life is and I think it was hard for my mom to see patients like that too because you realize that could be you in a few months in a year um, and the people in going through treatment, they literally, they're not happy. You can see their skin is yellow and they're just so frail and they're in a wheelchair and they have family members with them, but it is a very, very, very hard life for cancer patients. And I can't imagine what it's like um, to be in that situation. And I've had a taste of what it's like to have a loved one go through cancer, but Man, I just, I can't imagine what it's like being a parent and having a young child go through that because every day it's like you're fighting for something that you don't know if you'll win, if you'll come out at the end of it. And I think, um, you know, my worst fear in my life, and I'm telling you this, I don't know why I'm telling you this, is not being bankrupt, is not being poor, is not, um, you know, being alone, it's none of that. I think my biggest fear in my life is to have someone I love have cancer. That is the biggest fear of my life because it is so hard to see somebody go through that and to have them take a test, an exam, an MRI, a blood test, a this scan, uh, over and over again and just waiting for the phone call to, to see like how many more months or days you have to live and your whole life when someone close to you has cancer you can't live your life the way you want to like everything has to be put on pause and um, your whole schedule your whole life has to be around their treatments and basically you have to you know take care of them and um, and you know, do all these things for them. And I'm not saying that that's um, what's so bad about it, but it's just seeing them suffer through something, suffer for the opportunity to live. And it's so crazy how people will go through those kind of treatments just to live six more months. And you realize how lucky you are to have a full healthy body and to be able to have first world problems like, you know, for me being able to run a business, that is, although it's very stressful at times, it's such a lucky problem to have because I'm in this ability and capability to be able to do this. So that is something that I hope not, will never happen to me again, but I can't say that for sure because cancer is so prevalent and common. And, um, 
you know, even to this day, we don't know, like my mom has finished her treatment, but we don't know, like maybe one day it'll come back and it'll be more aggressive. And every single scan and test she has to take, it's this nerve wracking in the back of your head, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what are the results? And my mom has even said, like, sometimes she doesn't even want to take those exams and she doesn't want to take those MRIs because she doesn't want to know. She doesn't want to know, you know, she just wants to live her life. And if it comes back, then she said that maybe you just, you know, just die, right? Just, it'll just kill her off. But like, she doesn't want to go through that agonizing pain and struggle and worry. That is cancer. Go through chemotherapy. Um, I think my mom had a lot of nausea. It's pretty sick. I think you get really constipated. And so basically it just, you feel like shit for a week and then you feel a little bit better right, because your cells are building up after the chemo and then you feel a little bit better the third week but then you have to go back in for your chemotherapy which I think was really difficult because right when you're feeling like yourself again you kind of go back down to the chemo treatment. So after the rounds of chemo are completed um, they do radiation which radiation isn't um, as terrible as chemotherapy in my opinion. Basically what they do in radiation is they kind of like barbecue um, the area around where the tumor was to hopefully the, the cells will all like zip and zap and um, and like die. Um, so radiation doesn't hurt um, but sometimes the skin will be like really sensitive or itchy or like a sunburn and then sometimes there might be a little bit of pain in that area where you get radiation. Uh, but yeah, radiation apparently was not as bad as chemotherapy. The scary part about chemo and radiation is that cancer could come back and some people speculate that chemotherapy actually causes more cancer in the future because of all those toxins you're putting in your body. It's kind of like creating a more aggressive form of cancer. There is a probability of radiation causing new forms of cancer. So. I don't think we're at that point in society where, you know, we have a cure for it, right? There's treatment, but at the end of the day, no one has the real answer of how long you have to live and what's going to happen. So my mom finished her treatments and then um, I think the doctor she was seeing then, then wanted her to do another round of chemo and my mom was just like, I don't want to do this. Like, I, like, like I, I don't want to do it unless I absolutely have to go through chemotherapy. So we actually got a, another doctor um, from a different hospital who um, said that my mom doesn't need to go through another round of chemo. She's done with treatment and she's just living her life and what she's doing now is um, I think getting scans every six months to make sure the cancer isn't coming back where it's not spreading. Side effects that I saw my mom have, um, she became very thin and frail. The gardener came to our house one day and saw my mom and he said, oh my God, and he was like taken aback and he said, have you been exercising a lot? Because my mom exercises a lot. And you know, she's just very, very thin. She's probably a hundred pounds and five, 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 four. So um, she's very weak. She doesn't put on weight. <laughs> I'm like the complete opposite. Like very easy for me to put on weight and I'm definitely a lot more muscular and like big than she is. Um, her skin became very yellow and sallow uh, from the chemotherapy treatment and she has aged significantly. So two years ago, you know, she looked very good for her age, all that, and now she just looks like the aging has accelerated in her. She did lose her hair, which was, um, which was a very hard part of the cancer process um, because cancer like I think the scariest part of cancer is losing your hair, right? Because everything else you can kind of be in denial that you have cancer. Like you can, you can really it's, keep it a secret. A lot of people keep it a secret. A lot of people don't tell people that they're going through it. Uh, my mom in particular didn't really mention to her coworkers or anybody that she had cancer because she didn't want people to pity her. She didn't want to be treated differently. She just wanted to pretend almost like it wasn't there, so very few people knew about it. But I remember for Thanksgiving, we were out of town and she just started, like globs of hair started coming out. Like she would just like, like just, you know, run your fingers through and just like, like globs of hair would come out. And um, she never shaved her head. And I think the reason she never shaved her head was, um, I think it was just too traumatic or like it was just too much of like, thinking like the cancer is like gonna conquer her. So 
and she would, her, basically she was bald, but then she had little, like tiny little patches of strings through her hair because all of it fell out. Um, yeah, but she never shaved her head. And um, I think we gave her the option to shave her head, but she just didn't want to. She was just like, kind of like didn't want to go through that process. And I feel like the shaving the hair head process is probably just as traumatic as you know getting cancer itself. She had a wig, so I recommend if you know you have someone going through can chemotherapy to get the wig before um, the hair starts falling out, so they can like match it to their current style. And yeah, now her hair is like you know back as normal. Um, but it was, I think, the hair loss is probably one of the more traumatic aspects of cancer. The interesting part I learned through this experience was. A lot of people don't know much about cancer and a lot of people don't really know what it is and I used to think that it was so easy to like just take a screen or a test and the doctors would be able to tell okay you have stage 3 melanoma or whatever you know um, and X Y and Z but it's actually much harder to detect cancer and it's much harder to detect where it is and how it's spreading um, and nothing is an exact science. A lot of it is more of an art than a science. So there was one period where they saw something in her kidneys, I think. They saw like in the, in the um, radio imaging, they saw like little specks and they couldn't figure out what those specks were. And it was either <laughs> like two options, right? One was the cancer had spread, so it would be stage four cancer, or it was just a water bubble, like little bubbles in her like in her body. And the doctor didn't know which one it was. And it's hard to tell because the only way to know is you keep scanning someone and you have to compare their images before and after to see if that area has spread. But the thing is, is you don't want to keep scanning someone um, because I think going through the MRI is not good for you at all. So you want to kind of limit the amount of scans and tests you can take. And I never thought it was so hard for I guess doctors to like like know these things um, and so later on we found out that it was a water bubble <laughs> or something in her anatomy but you know it's very scary to not know like what those scans mean another thing I thought was interesting was a lot of times you know the doctors can't tell it's cancer so again um, the only way they can tell is if they see a progression or like a growth of something like of a tumor right sometimes they're like oh well there's this shaded area but I'm not sure exactly what it is it could be this it could be that it could be this it could be that so it's just really interesting and I've learned that there's so much out there to be uh, discovered and there's so much more potential for advances in technology because it is almost like a guessing game. I have heard of, you know, I guess conspiracy theories or reports from people that they were diagnosed with cancer but they didn't actually have cancer and they had to go through radiation and chemotherapy and all that stuff but at the end like they never had cancer in the first place. It's this crazy world out there that we still don't know a lot about. How cancer has affected me and how um, it has like changed my perspective on a lot of things. So, um, my family comes from the most polluted city in the world. So obviously the environment back in China is definitely not as good as it is here in Southern California where we live currently. It's only me, my mom, my dad, and my brother who are in the United States. Everybody else is still overseas. And again, I've said cancer is not super common in my family. This is the first incidence that we know of, of breast cancer. And the only thing I can think about that has changed from their lifestyle back in a very toxic, like environmental condition to here is, let's do a drum roll. I feel like the only thing that was like significantly different is the diet. Here we're eating an American diet. We're eating, you know, meat from the grocery store, from restaurants, whereas there, maybe in China, they're they're eating meat, but they're eating meat from like the local farmers, right? They're going to the, literally, like people are selling vegetables on the street. Getting vegetables from their backyard and selling on the street, like that's how you make your food there. Um, they don't really eat fast food. Um, you know, the place where I'm from in China, like, I don't even know if they have a McDonald's there. Like it's still not very much industrialized. So a lot of places like hole in the wall restaurants, they, they get the veggies and the meat and the fruit from backyards or farms. Um, so there's no genetically modified foods really there. There's no um, 
animal meats that are um, injected with hormones. Um, everything is very fresh that comes from there. And I don't know, I could, this could be totally coincidence, right? Correlation does not equal causation, but cancer, where my family is, my grandmas are like 90 years old versus uh, cancer in my family. Like the only kind of connection I can make is that the food we've been eating here has been, may have contributed to my mom's cancer. Again, my mom was never sick. She is the healthiest person I know, um, but she does eat a lot of meat. And I eat a lot of, I used to eat a lot of meat too. And we would buy meat from the grocery store. We would buy discount meat and we would go out to eat. And you know, when we go to a buffet and stuff, we eat a lot of red meat and all that kind of stuff. And I feel like maybe over time, the meat consumption and just really the bad quality of food we've been eating has contributed to my mom's breast cancer. I feel like a lot of people are not aware of where their food is coming from and how animals are treated, how animals are fed and grown and harvested into our food and our meat. And it's just interesting because in the Bible it says your body is a temple, right? Your body is a temple. So anything you put in your body, whether it's meat, it really affects your body. And um, that's something that I've been so passionate about now is I am just so much more conscious of what I'm eating, what I'm putting in my body, and um, making sure that the foods and vegetables um, I eat are organic and natural. Um, I want to know where things are sourced and I've been one of those crazy people now at Whole Foods or the grocery store I'm like is this salmon wild? <laughs> is this cage-free eggs? Is this organic? Like I've been I've been one of those people like who is literally like so annoying at the restaurants because I ask those things. But I remember when my mom did get like when she was first diagnosed with cancer I went on this spree where I just avoided any kind of meat and I only ate like organic like leafy vegetables um, and I was just like so terrified of eating anything that was non-organic <laughs> because I felt like it would cause cancer but I do want to say that you know we are living in an epidemic here in the United States where people are dying of heart disease and cancer and diabetes those are the most common cause of deaths it's not gunshots or it's not um, terrorism it's literally the food we're eating is killing ourselves. So I want, and my mission, is to educate people about what they're putting in their bodies, on their skin, and really being transparent about how products are created and how it's affecting your body and your skin in the long run. And if you guys know, I really do believe the reason why I developed such bad cystic acne when I was a teenager is not because of genetics, because my parents both had really clear skin, like everybody had clear skin. I really do believe it was the diet, the meat, the animal products that I was eating in my body and my hormones or whatever just like couldn't like control it or like it was very foreign to them and then my face will break out, right? Because it's a response to all the shit that I was putting in my body then. And it's so interesting because I asked my parents like, did you have acne? Did you know people who had acne? And honestly, in their childhood, acne was so foreign to them. Like they didn't, like nobody had like that stuff on their face. And now if you go back to China or to anywhere else, countries that have been industrialized very recently, people just have acne now and like dermatologists and people are seeing an uptick in acne. And it's really because of these like, you know, multinational corporations like just giving you shitty food and like antibiotic filled meats and your body is like responding to it by breaking out. My mission and my vision for Banish and personally has always been to create great products that actually like treat the root of the problem, not using a bunch of chemicals and a bunch of shit to put on your face to make it look good or make you feel good in the meantime, but um, make your skin worse in the long run. So now when I buy skincare products and I want to use products, I need to make sure I know every single ingredient that's in there. And even the food that I eat, I always try to buy organic and I always try to read the labels in my food and I've cut out high fructose corn syrup. I will spend more money for food. I think back then, like before this, before Banish happened, before uh, my mom had cancer, I was a lot more superficial. I want to appear cool and I want to appear beautiful and I want to appear successful to people. 
so I'm gonna spend a lot of money buying stuff I can't afford to appear cool to them. Um, but I'm not gonna, you know, spend money on eating healthy. I'm not gonna spend money on exercising. I'm not gonna spend money on buying like organic meats or better food because I don't wanna spend the money in that, right? But then again, I'll buy a Louis Vuitton purse, <laughs> you know, instead of like feeding myself healthy foods. And now my mindset has completely changed where I will invest so much more money into eating healthy and eating right and less money and like more of the superficial label designer things because to me health is wealth and I want to be here for the next 80 years and I want my close friends and family and everyone I love to be here and to be healthy as well and for nobody to have to go through cancer and again I don't think cancer is something that is like natural in our bodies right I don't think I don't think anybody should get cancer. I think our body should be healthy and I feel like um, we can get the antioxidants and the cancer fighting properties from the foods, um, the fruits and vegetables and foods that we eat. But again, if you're always eating like a cheeseburger every day, um, you know, your body is lacking the nutrients to fight off all those um, cancer cells. How has this changed me? How has this experience changed me? And what are the takeaways? Because I know this video is like a bajillion minutes long. First, I'm just much more conscious of what I eat. Now, it is impossible, like, okay, not impossible, but very hard because of my busy travel schedule. I always eat organic <laughs> and like, uh, you know, non-GMO, whatever. But I will, you know, try to make an effort to, you know, go to Whole Foods or go to Sprouts. Just make a little bit more of an effort to buy organic, especially with eggs. So eggs, I always buy organic, cage-free eggs. Milk, I try to, if I do drink milk, which I actually try not to drink milk because apparently there's like some um, correlation from milk consumption and breast cancer. So if I do drink milk, I try to drink organic milk and I'll buy the milk that is two to three times more expensive because, you know, it doesn't give me breast cancer, then yeah, it's definitely worth it. Um, and I try to limit my meat intake. Now, before when I found out my mom, you know, when I found out my mom had breast cancer, I was like, oh my god, no meat whatsoever, no red meat, no meat, no animal products. Being, I'm being raw vegan, like I was like crazy. And then I realized it wasn't sustainable, and I was too hard on myself. So now I just limit my meat intake. That means you know, eating more vegetarian once in a while. Um, right now, I've been loving um, veggie sandwiches. You know, the veggie sandwiches with like avocado and tomato and bean sprouts and all that kind of stuff. I'll usually get that. If I go to Subway, I used to go to Subway all the time. I used to get tuna all the time. Instead of getting tuna now, I'll just get a veggie sandwich. I still eat hamburgers. Before, I would kind of go to In-N-Out or I would eat a hamburger just like several times a week because I was just hungry and I, just, I didn't really think about what I put in my body. Now, I go to In-N-Out maybe, I think the last time I went to In-N-Out was like four months ago, right? And it's not that I'm consciously avoiding it. It's just I have found so many opportunities and other foods that I can eat that I don't really need In-N-Out anymore. But you know, if I am hungry and I am craving a burger, then yes, maybe I will go to In-N-Out, but it'll be like a few times a year instead of a few times a week. I still will eat steak, but instead of eating a big piece of steak, I will just eat a tiny little sliver. Usually I'll just ask whoever's ordering the steak if I can have a bite and that's it. And I feel good, I get my little meat um, intake and I feel good. To me, being vegan is something I maybe one day will aspire to be, but I just think right now with such a busy schedule, unless I can have somebody like plan every single meal for me, I think it's very, very hard. But it's just, you know, moderation, decrease, and being just more aware of your meat and dairy and food intake. Again, with the products I put on my face, I will wear makeup. For example, I'm wearing makeup here. Um, I know there's some makeup and you know, ingredients in, in makeup and skincare that can be carcinogenic. Um, but just being aware of that, you know, making sure I wash my face thoroughly after I use makeup. Um, skincare, I do try new skincare products, but at the end of the day, I always go back to using natural products like um, washing my face with, um, let's say like olive oil or something, you know, just using more gentle natural ingredients. Just trying to live a more healthy lifestyle, just being more um, in tune with what I'm putting in my body, no matter what it is. The last thing is just never, ever, ever, ever being too busy for your health. My mom was too busy um, to get the mammogram when she was supposed to. So who, who knew if she got the mammogram a year earlier, she would have to go through chemotherapy. Maybe they could have just taken the tumor out and it wouldn't have spread to her lymph nodes. You know, we never will know that. When you're supposed to get your annual checkups, go to your annual checkups. You're not too busy. 
okay? They're not too busy to go to your annual checkups. If you feel anything off with your body, if you feel like a little lump somewhere, if you feel like you're coughing a lot, if you feel anything that has changed in your body, immediately make a doctor's appointment and get it checked out. The best case scenario is you go there and you wasted like an hour of your life, right? But the best case scenario is they're able to catch something before it has spread to other parts. Cancer is aggressive. You know, it kind of does its own thing. So you want to make sure you catch it early. Tell your friends and family. Like if you notice that anything is different with them, um, if they're feeling a little bit more tired or, you know, if they have weird moles or whatever, anything unusual in your friends or family, push them, push them to get a doctor's appointment. You know, push them to go get it checked out because with cancer, time is the only thing you have, right? We're not gonna get new uh, miracles in cancer research development tomorrow. So the only thing you have on your side is time and use that wisely. So for me, I, I'm just like so paranoid now. Like I just, I always go to the doctor. Um, I am also getting ultrasounds in my breasts. In your physical, they do a breast um, examination or the doctor does. Um, I actually pinpointed to her, I had like a little, it felt like a pimple in my nipple and I had her take a look at it and so now she she puts me on the schedule where every six months I go in and I get an ultrasound. So right now that um, little nodule is benign, right? But again, they don't know if it's cancerous or not. They are only gonna know if it's cancerous if it gets bigger over time. Um, but I actually had to push her and I actually had to make the appointment and say, hey, take a look at this. Hey, I want to be in um, in the ultrasound schedule to make sure nothing is going wrong and I want to go every six months and I remember um, I was gonna be out of town um, for the next checkup and I said okay can I do it in month five and a half and she was like well you're not ready like your, your schedule is at month six and I said no I'm gonna be out of town so get me a time at, you know at um, at month five and a half and sometimes you have to be aggressive and sometimes you have to be selfish because this is your body and your health and you know sometimes doctors you know because they see so many patients and they're so busy they're, they're going to forget to remind you of these things so it is your prerogative um, and you have to take initiative to really take care of your body and your health so that has changed dramatically for me you know instead of going partying instead of um you know watching tv instead of you know going shopping I take that time and I prioritize my health over anything. I prioritize it over my family, I prioritize it over my business because if I don't have my health, I'm not gonna be able to be, you know, um, a good friend or family and I'm not gonna be able to run a successful business if I'm constantly sick and in the hospital all the time. Just prioritize your health, you know, put it on the schedule, get a doctor's appointment, don't be scared because we all go through this, but you owe it to not only yourself, but your loved ones to be healthy and to be there for them. So thank you all so much for watching this video. Um, I haven't really told anybody um, this entire story. And it is, you know, a, you know, a part of me was kind of scared to be so vulnerable with you guys, but I feel like if it helps one person go to the doctor, if it helps one person catch something early, then, you know, I will have done my job and this video will have been worth it. Um, and I think it's so great because this video is gonna be on for like, you know, however long YouTube is on and hopefully it'll inspire somebody to, to be healthy and to make healthy decisions. So thank you all so much for watching and let me know in the comments below if you have any experiences with cancer or what this video has motivated you to change in your life and I'll talk to you guys later, bye. There's a